told your friend you're not okay And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray I first learned about Zen Cohen's from reading Alan Watts and the Zen master Suzuki. And it's a fascinating concept. Uh, what I didn't realize was that I had heard of Zen Cohen when I was very young. It's the most famous Zen Cohen is, what's the sound of one hand clapping? And so these are things that don't have an answer, a logical answer. And so what they do is they take our mind out of its normal space so that we're open to new possibility. Many of us are starting to feel disillusioned these days because everything's changing so fast. So much information is coming out so rapidly. And uh, uh, we're starting to uh, lose our faith in some of the institutions uh, that we had grown up believing in. Uh, for many people, the political parties that they've invested you know, their awareness, their emotion into are starting to be revealed to be not really uh, advocating for the average person, uh, but for other more powerful interests. And the same thing is true of corporate media. And uh, it really doesn't matter, you know, what what uh, corporate media you watch, whether it's you know so-called left or so-called right. Uh, really, they they're all they all kind of have the same agenda. We're starting to find out, and they're all funded by the same interests. And the same thing is true of the political parties. Uh, so just as I've been disillusioned with the political party that I've supported for 40 years, my friends who supported, you know, the other political party, because we have really two uh, in this country, uh, they're feeling the same thing. They're starting to see that they, they don't really uh, represent their interests. So <clears throat> for a lot of people, uh, it's a real uh, struggle and a real disappointment uh, to be disillusioned about these things. But really what's happening is the world is becoming like a giant Zen Cohen. Uh, it's shaking our faith in old institutions uh, so that there's space for a rebirth, uh, a rebirth of ourselves, a rebirth of our society, a rebirth of our world. And what's encouraging <clears throat> for me and why uh, you know I don't lose faith uh, as these things happen is if you look at the public opinion polls, what you find is that people are very kind, very compassionate, and they have a very progressive vision of possibility that would nurture and support uh, the vast uh, population <clears throat> and not just a few special interests. So the people are in a good space and they're ready for some new ways of doing things that are much more nurturing for us and for our society and for our planet. Uh, but we have to have our old illusions, our old golden calves shattered uh, so that we can move into this new space. So when you lose heart, when you feel disillusioned, uh, don't feel bad about it. It's a good thing. The other thing, the other thing to keep in mind is that when we become aware of information, you know, whether it's passed to us by a friend or whatever, and you know, and I'm always, and I'm always looking for sourced information, you know. So when I watch, you know, news newscast, which is mostly uh, independent journalism on YouTube, uh, when I watch it, I look for the sources, and the ones that I follow uh, uh, are pretty good at uh, telling you what the sources are and providing the links to the sources so that you can go do your own research and you don't have to just believe what they're saying. And so that's really good. And uh, uh, so when we find out that one of our golden calves isn't what we thought it was, uh, our first reaction is to be very irritated at the person who gave us that information. And so, you know, if you've been ahead of the game and uh, you've become aware of information and statistics and data uh, that don't jive with the popular culture image uh, that is being painted. Um, you know, we have a tendency to bristle at that friend or that person that provided us that information. And what happens is we start to kind of, you know, and, and you'll see it when, when this happens with you with other people, uh, you'll see them uh, when you, 
when you touch a live wire uh, on that is uh, heretical or whatever to the media or the political forces that they follow, uh, what happens is uh, they will often kind of lash out. Uh, but then in time, you know, as, as they become aware of the information over time, it's like you plant a seed. And then as they become aware of the information over time themselves, uh, because that seed was planted, uh, then they realize that, that that was a true fact and that it was, that it was a, 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 a step towards their enlightenment to become aware of that. And so, uh, you know, it's never fun <laughs> to be in that situation uh, for either party. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, as you're becoming more and more enlightened, uh, just take heart because the only thing that's important is truth and compassion. And uh, this is all scientifically uh, proven. And I have a book called The New Second Edition of the Gospel of Science. And uh, if you read that book, you'll see I'll, I lay out, uh, you know, all the science uh, on these concepts. But we're headed somewhere good. And so take heart. Uh, because the old ways have to fall apart so that the new ways can be born. And uh, what makes it miserable is when we try to squeeze and hold on uh, to illusions. Uh, it's like we're flowing down a river towards really beautiful possibilities and changes, but we keep grabbing onto the rocks that we're familiar with. And then, you know, when you do that, then the current just keeps beating you against those rocks until you start to let go of your grip on them. And then you start to realize that, we, you know, it's kind of fun flowing down this river. It is going somewhere good. And uh, uh, the, uh, the compass uh, that, will, that gets us through these things is the, <clears throat> the fact that compassion uh, is the most powerful emotion. And this is scientifically proven. And that the uh, compassion is woven into the fabric of the universe from our DNA to our social systems, our economic systems, and everything. And again, I lay all that science out in the new second edition of the Gospel of Science. But, uh, uh, you know, letting go uh, and meditation, mind-body practices, uh, Tai Chi, meditation, yoga, Qigong, mindfulness... These are all scientifically proven techniques to help our brain let go of our grip on old, outdated information and to be more open to new information. It doesn't mean we're gullible, but what it means is, is that it changes our brain so that we don't auto-reject new information, uh, which is gripping onto the rocks. That's, that's, that's what happens in the brain when we're gripping onto the rocks. And so what the science shows is that when we practice these mind-body practices, it changes our brain so that the brain lets go of that auto-reject so that it can entertain new information. And uh, it doesn't automatically accept it, but what it means is that we can evaluate the information and then make more wise choices for the future. And uh, uh, so uh, the, the neurological and brain changes that occur when we practice mind-body practices are designed to help us let go of our grip on the rocks. Now, there may be times, you know, when we want to kind of hold on for a little bit, but we realize that it's okay to let go. And we realize that it's okay to flow into new possibilities and new information. So this is what the world is, this is what the world is going through right now. Uh, the ancient Mayans, uh, they uh, had a prediction for the time that we're living in. Uh, and uh, uh, they called this time that we're living in the quickening. And uh, that, made real, <laughs> that made real sense to me when I first heard that because I think we all feel that. We all feel everything getting faster and faster. The internet's part of it, the mass movement of information. Uh, but, uh, uh, but it's more than that. Uh, it's, it's just a time of change. It's a time of awakening. And it's a time of incredible possibilities. Uh, we could remake this world in extraordinary ways. And I think one of the things that's really important to let go of at this time is the illusions and delusions that are holding us back. And one of those illusions and delusions is uh, the popular culture, the popular corporate media. Uh, they, keep re re, uh, uh, they keep re impressing upon us that the world is increasingly dangerous 
and that people around us are increasingly violent and uh, that they're increasingly divisive and increasingly sexist and increasingly racist and increasingly homophobic. And uh, uh, since I got immersed in this science, uh, it's really changed the way that I operate. It's like when I meditate in the morning, one of the things that I do before I uh, you know, start my day is uh, I think to myself, everybody that I meet today is going to be my friend. And then when I go out into the world, it just sends this kind of ripple uh, that changes everything. And nine times out of 10, you know, the people that I run into turn out to be, you know, very nice people that I have great conversations with because I set that up from the beginning. And this is really the opposite of what the media is doing. You know, the media, I've, I've been a corporate media viewer for many decades, but I just, during the pandemic, there came a point where it was just so divisive and so shrill and so fear-based that I just started to walk away from that corporate media. And, uh, and then it, when I went out uh, in my, you know, life, you know, in my day, uh, I started noticing how incredibly kind and polite people are to one another. And, uh, you know, I would see, you know, like some maybe redneck looking guy in a pickup truck with a bunch of tools in the back that was really busy and uh, at the convenience store. And he'd be walking out with his coffee and you could tell he was busy. You know, he had tools in the truck ready to go. And, uh, you know, and I happened to notice there was some uh, lady walking across the parking lot and she had pink and purple hair and multiple piercings. And so the popular culture would tell us that, that this, this guy wouldn't like her. But he stood and he opened the door and he held the door open for her and as she walked across the parking lot. And then there was a tall black guy that was walking across, walking towards the door as well. And so that, uh, you know, that redneck looking guy, uh, he held the door open for him and they all said, please and thank you. And they were all quite polite. And if you start to look at the world in the reality that it is, you'll start to see a whole different world. Now, let me give you an example of just how distorted the media makes our picture of the world. Uh, they make us think, like I said, <clears throat> that the world, uh, that the people around us are more violent than ever. And that is just not the case. In my book, The New Second Edition of the Gospel of Science, I have the FBI data. And what you see when you look at it is you see a dramatic drop in uh, reported violent crimes over the last 40 years. So for 40 years, violent crimes have been dropping like a rock. But when I talk to my friends that are still watching mainstream corporate media, uh, they reject that. And sometimes they get mad at me. You know, they just won't believe it because the impression the media gives us is that everybody is getting more violent and the world's just going to hell in a handbasket. And it's just not the case. And so if we can let go of that rock, then when we go out in our day, we see a whole different world. We see a whole different world. So uh, when I tell people, and I do stress management presentations for corporations, hospitals, or whatever, and I always tell them, you know, because it's, it makes life less stressful if we realize that the world is not mean and angry and violent, uh, at least nowhere near the level that the media tells us. Because if you read Steven Pinker's book, Better Angels of Our Nature, he does an incredible job of looking at the forensic history of humanity. And uh, the, the world today is vastly less violent uh, than at any time in human history. And like I said, from my own research, or the FBI uh, data, that uh, uh, violent crime rates have been dropping like a rock for 40 years. And so uh, this is uh, a liberation. We can let go of that rock that we've been squeezing that makes us think that everything is so dangerous and so hopeless and so filled with despair. And if we let go of that rock, this river will carry us to some wondrous places. Because if we're living in a, in a safer society, for example, uh, we can spend less money on prisons. <laughs> we could save a lot of money on prisons. We imprison more people than any country in the world here in the United States. And, uh, and that just makes no sense at all if violent crime rates are at 40-year lows. And so we can, we can create a new society. Uh, this is a very hopeful thing. Uh, it, it, there's... There's nothing dangerous about uh, becoming disillusioned because through that we find our enlightenment. And the enlightenment uh, uh, from my journey uh, leads to compassion and understanding that the world is really, really a beautiful place. And the people around us are really quite beautiful, really quite interesting. And I find that if I meditate before I go out for my day, everything changes. Everything changes.
And uh, one thing, one story that I share with my students, you know, just to kind of get them to, you know, kind of enjoy their lives and be in the moment instead of rushed all the time. And so I always tell them, you know, I always meditate in the morning. And then if I'm getting ready to go into a convenience store or a meeting or whatever, uh, then I'll meditate for a few minutes in my car just to let go, let go of my grip on everything so that I'm open to new possibility. And so I was in a convenience store and I was waiting in line and there was a lady behind the counter and, uh, you know, my thought in my head was that, you know, there's this old lady behind the counter. And then when it was my turn to come up, there was nobody behind me. And when I came up to the counter, you know, I was, uh, there just happened to be a Beatles song uh, on the radio. And, uh, and I told her, oh, I said, I love the Beatles. And she said, oh, she said, really? She said, you know, when I was 16, uh, I went to see George Harrison in concert here in Kansas City. And uh, he was playing at the Cow Palace. And, and they didn't have chairs in there. Everybody sat on the floor. And she said uh, 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 that some friends of mine had saved some places right up by the stage uh, where George Harrison and his men were pl going to play. And so I was working my way through the crowd to get up to my friends. And, and when I got near the stage, I stumbled and fell. And she said that uh, George Harrison stopped playing and uh, uh, stepped down off the stage and helped her up. And then he picked up his guitar and started playing again. And that was such a beautiful story. And the thing is, is as I was watching this lady <clears throat> tell this story, uh, she was no longer some anonymous old lady, you know, that I was just going to buy something from and get my change from. <clears throat> she got younger and younger. And by the time she finished telling this story, you know, I could see this 16-year-old girl. It was like the light in her eyes was that 16-year-old girl. And, uh, and that was a really beautiful moment in my day and really in my life. I mean, that happened like a year ago, and I still remember it very clearly. And I always will. <clears throat> and so, uh, you know, I would have missed that if my brain would have been tangled up or if I would have just walked into there with my prejudice that, oh, there's some old lady that I'm going to give my money to behind the counter. <laughs> and, uh, and I discovered this really beautiful human being. And we can do this. Uh, we can change everything. Uh, uh, and, and the world, what's, and then what's really amazing, and I get into this in my book, the new second edition of Gospel of Science, all the science is laid out, is that what science is showing is that uh, when we're in compassion states of consciousness, that's the most powerful form of consciousness, and it affects the consciousness of others in the world. It actually goes beyond our brain. This is all science. I know it sounds like science fiction, but it's all science, and I have it meticulously in-noted in the book so that you can go see it yourself. And so we're actually changing or having an effect on other people's consciousness when we go more powerfully when we're in those compassion states. And uh, uh, one of the things that's fascinating when you look at the science is that during this same 40 years uh, that violent crime rates have been dropping, not just in the United States, but in many countries around the world. And again, I have this data in the book. Uh, during that 40 years, that's when mind-body practices have spread around the planet like a wildfire. And uh, they, uh, 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 you know, nobody knows exactly why the violent crime rates are dropping, you know, in so many places around the world. But having taught and studied and practiced uh, mind-body practices for 40 years and looked at the brain science and how it affects things, and also teaching in maximum security prisons uh, where they see the violent crime rates or the violence go down within the prison when they teach people how to do mind-body practices in the prison, uh, I realized that uh, it's no coincidence. Uh, it's, it's a convergence uh, that as mind-body practices spread around the planet, violent crime rates continue to drop. And uh, so uh, we launched the Global Transformation Project, which is a worldwide coalition effort uh, to advocate for a United Nations resolution to get mind-body education into public education worldwide so that we're teaching students all over the world how to go into this alpha-theta state. And we have these science-based uh, 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 thousands of year old practices that are proven to take the human consciousness into that alpha state. And what happens when we go into that alpha state is the empathy and compassion parts of the brain get larger and the fear and stress parts of the brain get smaller. So we could be spreading this all over the planet, increasing the empathy and compassion vibration of the consciousness of the whole planet and finding compassionate solutions to the problems that we're facing as a society. And uh, uh, this would be the most transformational thing that we could do. 
Uh, and in the meantime, uh, you know, we can practice mind-body practices ourselves and begin to let go of our grip on the rocks and start to see that we're flowing towards just beautiful possibilities in our personal life. <clears throat> you know, finding that the world around us is much kinder than what the media tells us. And so in my, in my meditation classes, my stress management classes, I encourage people, you know, watch less news. You know, meditate, get out in nature. Uh, there's research that shows that they call it nature therapy is very effective. <clears throat> and so, uh, uh, yeah, I encourage people, you know, get away from the news. Get away, let go of your grip on that rock. And what you'll find is that this is a much more beautiful uh, place. And so what, what we discover when we look at the science is we will never hate or uh, condemn this world into becoming the loving place that we all want for ourselves and our children and our grandchildren. But what we can do, and this is what the science shows, is we can love this life. We can love this world into a loving place. And that's the only way that it's going to happen. And so this is the Zen Koan that the planet is going through right now. And the, the more we can let go of our grip on the rocks of old, outdated, and oftentimes false paradigms, you know, fear-based, uh, limitation-based paradigms, and then allow space for possibility, uh, then that's when the world can unfold more easily into the kind of world that we want. And the, uh, and the, the other thing the science shows is that when we practice mind-body practices, uh, we become smarter, or we increase our IQ, our uh, verbal uh, fluency, our GRE reading scores, our math proficiency skills, and also our gamma wave consciousness, where the brain waves go, tend to go into gamma wave more when we practice mind-body practices on a regular basis. And gamma wave thinking is multidimensional thinking. So when we get frightened and stressed, which is what the popular culture, you know, entertainment and news does, is it makes us think that everything's very dangerous. What happens is our, our, our uh, uh, breadth of vision shrinks. Uh, when we're in stress, uh, you know, we're just, that's left over from, you know, the old days of our ancestors. And so we're in a position where there's a tiger that's trying to eat us. And so we have a very singular focus of consciousness. It's a very limited consciousness, you know, just to survive. But we don't live in that world anymore. And, uh, 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 you know, even though the media paints it that way. And so, uh, uh, so what happens is, is that uh, gamma wave consciousness that these mind-body practices promote uh, let go of that fear-stress consciousness and it opens us up to what they call multidimensional thinking where we can see any given issue from many different uh, angles and we're able to arrive at a much more rational, much more effective uh, conclusion and way of approaching the world. And so uh, cultivating that gamma wave consciousness is a big part of this uh, consciousness revolution or evolution that's happening around the planet. So this is already happening and you can be a part of it. Uh, you can start meditating, start practicing Tai Chi, Qigong, yoga, mindfulness, and it'll change your brain waves. It'll improve your life. Uh, it'll make you happier. This is all scientifically proven. But at the same time, we're also contributing to a shift in global consciousness a global transformation. So you can learn more about the science on education uh, and mind-body education at globaltransformationproject.org. And there's a petition there that you can sign. And then I hope that you will share that website and this information and perhaps even this video with as many people as you possibly can. Because the more people that are practicing these things, the faster the planet's going to change and the less painful the transitions will be as we let go of our illusions and open to a new way. So thank you for listening and please pass this on to everyone you know. This is a very exciting time to be alive. So take care, have a great day and just go out and enjoy the world and just tell yourself before you go out, when you meditate, let your brain just let go, let your heart let go of all the things it's squeezing onto and just remind yourself that when you go out that day, you're going to meet a lot of new friends. You know? And when you start talking to people, you'll find that people are very, very hungry for human connection. Now, if you slip into the propaganda talk, because that's what a lot of people do, you know, you'll start having a nice conversation with somebody and then it'll slip into the propaganda talk and you can just hear them parroting and quoting you know, what they heard on whatever their flavor of news or corporate media is. 
and uh, and then that's when things get tight and squeezed and they get disingenuous and and they become you know part of the illusion and so what i do is i just take a breath and let go i don't engage i don't argue on that uh, i just move into something that's more beautiful and more positive uh, because that's how we change the vibration of the planet. Now, it doesn't mean that I, uh, that I don't care about anything. I do care when people are hungry, when people are hurting. And, uh, you know, and, and I will, you know, write letters or, you know, do whatever uh, I can do to uh, uh, alleviate that suffering. So it's not like I don't care about other people or anything like that. But I just don't engage in the illusion way of looking at things. Um, uh, uh, one of the things that mind body practices has done for me is it's gotten me to a point where I'm always looking for the solutions. And if you read my book, the new second edition of the gospel of science, uh, that book is a big scientific solution to so many of our personal and uh, global problems that could save us trillions of dollars in future health spending and social spending. So, uh, so I'm just always looking, you know, for the positive, the solutions, and I don't get tangled up in all the, you know, all the tight little arguments that uh, corporate media is always trying to get us tangled up in. Because what it does is it divides us and it takes us away from, from our true course, which is, which is compassion and expansion and enlightenment and possibility. So take care. Have a great day. All right, well, let's dive in. So, uh, all right, so just finding that comfy place in the chair, letting gravity give us a big hug, just feeling the earth just hug us as we sag with each breath. And as the eyes are closed easily and naturally, noticing how they continue letting go. That soft tissue and the tiny optical muscles And the eyes, notice now the eyes continue letting go. Feeling the tip of the tongue lightly touch the gum line there. And those full abdominal breaths just filling us like a wave. All the way up into the airy fibers of the lungs. And on those sighing exhales, as the shoulders relax down and away from the neck, everything that we are begins to let go of everything that we've held on to. Letting go of the day and the week. Any plans that we have later on this gorgeous Thursday. So that with each releasing breath, our awareness continues to gather and fall deeper and deeper into the center of where we are right here and right now. And now opening to the sun directly above the head, and just by thinking of that radiant lighted awareness above the physical fray, instantly we begin to experience that lift, <clears throat> that lift in vibratory rate, that feeling of just lightening up on ourselves and the world all around us, permeating everything that we are. we breathe and let go of our grip on ourselves again and again, there's just more and more space for that lightness, that silken nurturing effortlessness. As now the brain mind opens to that higher lighted awareness, the mind sighing, letting go of trying to think or trying not to think so that we can just drift on whatever little through this lighted knowing awareness that we're down through the sides and the back of the head, the base of the skull begins to let go. And as the old brain and the back of the head sigh, all that panic and fear stuff that we squeeze back there surrenders into the safety of that opening lightness. Just let that whole energy field of the back of the head just sigh, open, lighten. 
in the spine and the spinal fluid. And as with all this stuff, that's a field experience. So the whole back, the whole field opens to it. And all the miles and miles of nerves being soothed and coated by that silken expanse. Thighs, full breaths, loosening, stretching, yawning, anytime we feel like it. The solar plexus as it sighs and sags, allowing space for that lightness to echo through the abdomen and the pelvic bowl, on up through the chest and the heart and the lungs. The lungs, the wings of inspiration begin to open, to lift and light. We don't make it happen, we just let it happen. Again, that nurturing radiance permeates the entire universe all the time, just waiting for us to breathe and let go, allow space for it. And the bronchial tree, the upper chest lightening up on itself. and the heart lighting so that every breath we breathe in breathes in lighted oxygen that's carried with every beat of the heart through the circulatory liquid lymph and glandular systems and with the liquid systems the emotional awareness lifting So we sigh and let go of our hold on emotional states so that we can just drift on whatever lilts through this lighted knowing sensory and emotional awareness that we are. Being opened and unfolded by it. Good. Now thinking of that field all around us beginning to blaze up in that magnetic consuming fire action. It begins to magnetically draw and lift the tight and heavy loads up and out off of us in all directions. As we just breathe and let go again and again, some of the weight of the world lifting out of us and off of us. It's like the bones could sigh and let go of the tight, heavy loads they've been squeezing. The very core of our being letting go. And if we notice any blocks or tangles or discomforts or dis-ease, whether it be mental, or emotional, or physical, or whatever, knowing that it's <clears throat> nothing bad about that, it's just blocked or tangled energy that's taken advantage of this space that we've allowed here to unload into those consuming fires. So wherever we notice those blocks or that resistance, we, just like the rest of our field, those areas can sigh. We just let go of our hold around things. They drift wherever they're going. As we breathe and let go, unload. In the center of the heart, in the center of the brain, knowing that it is safe to just sigh, to just unhinge, get lost in that unloading drift.
Good. Now those magnetic consuming fires blazing up, intensifying 10 times over, deeply drawing whatever it is that we've stirred up or churned up or that we're ready to let go of. As we just sit back and breathe and let. Starting to find it again, we can let go in ways and in places deeper than we even knew we existed. Including that center of the brain, knowing that it is safe to just sigh, unhinge, get lost in that drift, that unloading. Good. And that unloading can continue on some level, even as we let go of it on a conscious level. And rather now open to the full field assimilation of light, as we're just floating in this ocean of expanding radiance. Lifted and buoyed upon it. Opened and lighted. As each releasing breath becomes a free fall into absolute safety and complete acceptance. There is nothing to measure up to here, just breath and light and opening. As we're soothed and nurtured in this radiance, this silken effortlessness. Held dearly. center of the brain knowing that it is safe to just let go to even lose our sense of self in this silken nurturing field of effortlessness It's like we infuse with that lightness on the full abdominal in-breath and on those sighing exhalations, we become that nebulous, undefined, nurturing radiance, losing that sense of I and me as we just meld in this field of lightness. Every breath unhinged, drifting, letting that energy field of the brain and the heart just let go. Knowing it's safe, it's safe to let go.
more we let go, the more light there is. So I'm just always reminding the center in my brain, that energy field there, that it is safe to just let go, to just, to just get lost in it. Good, and we can continue floating in this silk and radiance, even as when the time feels right, we'll begin that very gradual soft focusing on the floor or whatever, but there's no rush. Just letting the waves drift us back in their own time. Enjoying the transition. So that even as we do start to become visual at some point, not really focusing or fixing on anything, but continuing to open to that field awareness that we are, that pure lighted consciousness. And then just letting the body talk to us, you know, it probably wants to start rolling things out and loosening the shoulders and shoulder blades and neck and maybe rolling out an ankle or toe or just anything, stretching a calf muscle. There's just myriad ways the body can loosen and move. And this is what little kids will do. If you watch little kids, you know, really little kids before they get into public school. You know, they just move things all the time and it is so good to do that. It's so good for them. And so that part of us that liked to do that when we were young uh, is still there. And now when we practice the meditations and go through them, our mind isn't racing. And so it's more present to just really enjoy these subtle sensations in a really more profound way. Yeah, I was doing a conference with some mind-body teachers from around the world. Uh, with this London station called Healing Our Earth. And, uh, and uh, at some point in the conversation, uh, somebody was talking about children, you know, really young children. And I said, uh, yeah, I said, uh, really young children, they're, they're already mind-body masters. You know, they are mind-body masters. And everybody just immediately agreed, you know. <laughs> and so that, so all this stuff's so natural. It's just that the world kind of trained us to, you know, deny all these simple pleasures and think they're not beautiful and important and magnificent like they really are. And that always takes us into that gratitude state when we enjoy things and the science shows that's very healing for the brain and the heart. So it's good. It's a good habit to create. So really Qigong mind, mind body practices, they just help us create new habits. You know, with consciousness and larger possibility and that gratitude consciousness becomes more normal. All right. So anybody have any comments or observations or anything? I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. Cause you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until